The Bulls open the market and the Bears close it. Who's in control? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, we talked about the fact that the market should be moving up to do a back test of the pivot and the bears needed to hold, and that's exactly what we saw. The market moved up into the pivot, the bears held, and moved the market down the rest of the day. But the bears are far from out of the woods. I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, so the bears held the pivot overnight and then push down the rest of the day, but they still have a little bit to go to confirm that the pivot is held. So let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And after that move down into the weekly 21 in the 1236 area, we were looking for a back test of the pivot, which is 4425 to 48. They pushed up about midway into the pivot into the 4440 area. And then the bears held and pushed down the rest of the day. But now the bears need to follow through so what we saw today is a potential wave one down. And what we look for here is a couple of different things. The NASDAQ posture actually has us looking lower, while ES has us potentially bouncing. So how they sync that up will be uh, important. But on the ES, what we're looking at is basically a couple of potentials. So the first potential would be our primary count that we got wave one down, that we need to look up in wave two. And then we'd look for a wave three down, toward the 4330 area, a wave four bounce, and then that 4300 area to complete the overall bigger wave three. So we had three of three here, four of three here. We would complete five of three to the downside to complete bigger wave three. And then we'd look for another bounce back up towards 4390. That would be the primary path and what we would expect to happen. Now there are a few curveballs. As always, the market doesn't make it super easy. There is this little spike right here on the ES that could be considered a wave two, and given the posture on the NQ, that would be uh, that would make some sense. So in that case, this would wave one would already be done, and we have this wave two bounce down, and now they're back testing the bottom of this wave one, and if they break down through this wave one and break through forty three ninety, that would be an indication that we're on our way down in this wave three toward that forty three thirty area in a more direct manner. Uh, typically, we would see a bigger bounce in wave two, but just like we saw up here, this wave two was very shallow as well, and we got the wave three down. So not an uncommon thing, especially in strong moving markets, that the wave two or the bounces are a little bit weak. Also, we're selling off of a diagonal, which also contributes to that. So it is possible that two is in, and they're trying to break down right now. Again, through 4390 would be a indication that we're breaking to the downside and looking for... Uh, a more direct move down. Now the bull pattern and what the bulls need here is they're hoping for an ABC higher. And that ABC higher would look for the 4550, 45, uh, 4500 to 4550 range. And then from there, we'd look for a C wave down to about 4300 to complete an ABC down off of the top in a bigger wave four in a bullish count and if you're confused about that, I did do a big picture overview on Monday. So you can check out that video to get an overview of what that means. This bigger wave for in the bullish count down around 4,300, 4,300 up here, and then up from there and a bullish move that would take us back toward all time highs. So yesterday's high becomes extremely important for the bears. If the bears cannot hold yesterday's high, there's only a few points above that in the pivot left. It is, of course, possible that they could push up to the 618 and then come down. But I find it unlikely, given that they got to 4440 yesterday, that 4448 would hold should they come back up and take out that high. So yesterday's high becomes extremely important for the bears to continue this downside move and give us that impulsive move that would tell us we're in the bigger C wave down. So overall, a break of 43.90 directly tells us we're more likely in this wave three headed down towards 43.30. If they can hold and push up, they need to hold in this 44.20 to 25 range for wave two and then push down. And the bulls want that ABC higher towards 4,500 to 4,540. Over on the NASDAQ. Okay, so on the NASDAQ, we told you they needed to hold that 15.121 level, which is exactly where they hold, held. And then they started to push down and 
What we have in the NASDAQ, once we zoom in here, I'm going to zoom in a little tighter so you can see, is we do have a 1-2 one, two, uh, one, two type setup where they're trying to break through the pivot. And if they can do that, we would look for them to continue to the downside uh, in this bigger wave three down here toward the 40, uh, three, 14, 386 area that we've been talking about. That would complete wave three. Then we look for a wave four bounce and then down from there. Let's zoom into the five minute because it's harder to see on the one hour chart. So on the five minute, you have your one, two, they came down in one, two. And now they're kind of down here chopping in the pivot, as you would expect. They need to break down. We'd look for 14.905 first, and this is a critical level because it is the 1.0 retrace. Uh, and you would, or 1.0 retrace of A and B, or 1 and 2. And that would be a typical C wave level, and then you'd look for higher from there. So you want to see them push through if you're bearish down to the 14.870 area. 14.870 gives us a bounce back towards 14.941, then down towards 14.812 back up to 14.905, and then 14.750 would give us our wave one down. So right now, they're chopping in the pivot. We would expect them to continue to the downside to at least 14.09, I'm sorry, 14.905 to complete that C wave down. Or if we're in wave three, as I suspect, three of three would target 14.870, and then we'd look for continuation to the downside to 14.750 overall. Now, if they can't push down and they do hold, again, just like on ES, we would consider this move down from the top down here in A wave. We would consider this a B wave, and we would look for an uh, A, B, and then C higher up out of here toward that blue box I have on the chart up higher right here at the 15,350 area up to about 15,700 area. We'd look for them to get up into that box and then give us a C wave down before we resume the bullish trend, if that's the case. Again, yesterday's high is extremely important, especially on the NASDAQ, since they are right at that level we needed to hold. So the NASDAQ would be looking at the potential for this to be wave four, and then starting down as long as they can break through the pivot and get down to that 14,870 area, that would be a strong start for the bears. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It will take you right to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there. I want you to make sure you love it and become part of my trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. We also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners course. It is an excellent course on how to learn Elliott Wave. If you're curious about it or never understood it or just wanted to try it, you can see on the screen I make it very clear. I make it very easy to understand a pretty complex system so that you can finally understand the market. It's helping traders learn how to trade instead of trying to decipher the news cycles. It's 25 videos broken up into three parts. First part is the introduction where I go over expectations, mindset, and emotion, uh, how to keep it simple, and why it works. We have the chart set up where I go over every tool you need to use along with Elliott Wave Theory so that you can get confirmation of what you're seeing on the screen and know when turns are coming. And then we go through, of course, the Elliott Wave for Beginners part where we go through all the waves, one through five, as well as ABC corrections, how they work, what their targets are, how they invalidate, how they are confirmed, all the different things you would want to know about Elliott Wave Theory so that you can understand the market. The really cool thing is, that it comes with both monthly memberships. So if you don't want to buy the course, you can become a monthly member, and you do get that Elliott Wave course included in that membership. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing trade, which means our trades can last anywhere from a few days to a few months, so we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are looking for day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, day trading, and PT's reduced risk binary method that just crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you big multiples on your money, and it's how he structures the trade that's so unique. It's something you really have to see to understand, and that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we would love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, the key takeaways for today, yesterday's high becomes of the utmost importance. The bears must hold that high and push down. We would look for them to bounce in two on the ES or potentially move directly down a break of 4390 directly would be an indication that we're already in three, but a bounce in two that holds below 
this way for high and then moves down would be the expectation. If they cannot hold the high, we would look for the bulls to push it up towards 4,500 to 4,540 before seeing a C wave down to complete that move and give us a more bullish count instead of a bearish count. Over on the NASDAQ, a little bit different of a setup. They have a pretty clear 1212 into the pivot. We would like to see them move down to the 14,870 region. If they can break down below that and continue to the downside, then we would be looking for continuation down to that 14, three, uh, 14,750 level to give us wave one, and then overall move down into that 14,376 level. If they cannot push down through the pivot or can't get through the 1.0, then we can see an ABC up into this blue box at 15,300 to 15,700 before seeing a C wave down to complete the move. Guys, that is your market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.